Hey there, Alex Kidman. Today taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. This is an odd phone and I guess I should qualify that. Its predecessor, the S20 FE, was one of my favourite phones of the past couple of years. I think it's actually one of the best phones Samsung's put out in years because it hit just the right point of performance and camera and battery life and features and price. There really wasn't too much to compete with it. Fast forward to right now, though, with the S21 FE, it's a bit more of a complicated story. So the S20 FE was a lovely balanced phone. This is not quite as balanced and especially not quite as balanced when you compare it. That's really the crux of buying the S21 FE. It's a pretty good phone, actually, in most respects. It's just that for the same money, you can get some slightly different feature sets and you may be able to get a slightly better phone. So let's take a look. First off, with the design, and obviously the design here is basically that of the S21 family. You'd expect that. The FE stands for fan edition, but they've basically both been just plastic versions of the phones that preceded them. And this is no different. Samsung provided me with the graphite model, basically the black. It's the plain one, but you can also get it in olive or lavender, pinky purple, or white, if that suits you. I like the idea of there being choice in the colours. Now on the front, you've got a 6.4 inch dynamic AMOLED display with 120 hertz capability. It's a really good screen. Samsung basically doesn't do bad phone OLEDs in this sense. It's an interesting size as well. A little bit bigger than the S21 that you might compare it with price-wise. Bigger than the S22 is likely to be as well. Larger phone, which may not suit every hand, but great for gaming and video watching and so on, as most large screens are wont to be. So let's talk cameras. Here it gets kind of interesting. At the rear, you've got a triple lens setup with a 12 megapixel wide, 12 megapixel ultra wide, and 8 megapixel telephoto. That's a bit of a cut down from the S21. And again, you know, that's sort of what the fan edition is meant to be. The tricky part here is comparatively, you probably can get an S21 for about the price of the S21 FE. And of course, the other competitor lurking in the wings is the Google Pixel 6. And I guess arguably the iPhone 12 mini, if you like, if you want to stay on the Apple side of the fence. So where does this sit? Well, actually, I think it's a really capable camera in most respects. If you wanted to compare it against the Pixel 6, the big thing, of course, that this has that that doesn't is proper telephoto. It's not super long telephoto, but realistically, those space zoom lenses that Samsung talks about, they're not great at extreme zoom distances, even with a tripod. Just the ability to get a bit closer up to nature or to your subject is great. Just don't push it too far. Um, this also does reasonably passable video. So I've got a sample here. Uh, snapping between things is fine. But obviously, again, if you push the zoom too far, it will all fall apart pretty quickly. Still, I'm fairly pleased with the cameras on the S21 FE. They're good within their price bracket. Again, though, the real challenge, the real comparison point is, as I'm recording this, as this is going out, we're about a week away from the expected reveal of the S22 phones. This is a phone that came out late relative to where the S20 came out to the S21s. And that means that, again, there could be even better cameras for maybe not much more money. Would not surprise me to see a price drop on this on that basis. On the performance side, it's a reasonably well-equipped phone. Now, here in Australia, the model that I've tested is the Exynos 2100 variant. International markets may also see a Snapdragon 888 variant, but the reality with these mid-range mid phones is basically they really will run just about anything you want to throw at them in almost every situation. Android apps just really aren't pushing those high-end processors such that you need the full power thing. The RAM could perhaps be a little higher, and the one thing that does annoy me here is that this is a sealed storage phone, either 128 gig or 256 gig, but you can't expand that, and I really wish that was in this phone but it's not. It's also, of course, 5G capable, and that's fine. It's only sub-6 gigahertz for the model that I've tested. Again, international models may vary, and 5G is fine when you can get it nice and quick at the moment. It's still not that killer reason to buy a smartphone per se, and it can have a bad effect on the battery. Speaking of the battery, this is a bit of a challenging one, because on one hand, you get a lot in power terms. It does USB-C charging, but it also does wireless charging, and even reverse wireless charging. So if you want to really slowly share its battery with other phones or other wireless devices, yeah, you can totally do that. It's pretty easy to do, and it works quite well, albeit slowly. 
However, comparatively speaking, again, the battery on the S21 FE just doesn't do quite as well as other phones in the same price bracket. So putting it up against the Pixel 6, for example, that's a phone that I can pretty easily guarantee I will get through most days without a problem battery-wise, even on heavier, heavier use days. Of course, as with any phone, you can run it flat if you run things for long enough that are heavy duty enough. That's no different to any other device. But even on my just regular days where this should last the full day, I often found towards the very end of the day, it was starting to struggle a little bit more, and certainly more than I would see on the Pixel 6. Battery life is okay. You're usually not going to struggle, but it's just not as good as it really should be in this price bracket. So, should you buy the S21 FE? So, look, as I'm recording this, given we're a week out from the S22 launch, I can't see why you wouldn't wait at least to see what Samsung's offering and when it'll come to market. Some current rumors suggest it may be a little bit delayed from launch to availability everywhere. But I'd certainly wait and see, both because of the pricing of those models, but also the pricing of the S21 FE. Right now, as I'm recording this, the 128 gig model in Australia will cost you $999. The 256 gig model will cost you $1,099. I don't have a crystal ball that will tell me what the S22 pricing is likely to be, but it's probably not going to be a whole lot higher than that. The other factor there, of course, is that we may see price drops in the S21 FE's pricing once the S22s are available. As such, it's a phone that could well be worth getting if you can get it at the right price. At its full retail price, it's a little sharper than I think it should be, and you'd certainly be well advised to look at what you can get out of a Pixel 6, or indeed the S22s, or the older S21s, because those are still in market. And it's not uncommon, of course, to see year-old Android phones at significant discounts. So this is a good phone in most respects. It just feels a little bit expensive for what it is. Anyway, that's my take on the Galaxy S21 FE. What do you think? Got any thoughts, any comments, anything you'd like to know? Let me know in the comments below. And as I always say, thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe.